Assalamu alaikum. All right. As we always begin our meetings with an opening prayer. So for those of you who are viewing, if you are a believer or non-believer, we ask you stand for our opening prayer. Position of prayer. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds, the beneficent, the most merciful master this day of judgment in which we now live. Thee alone do we serve and thee alone do we beseech for aid. Got us on the right path. The path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed thy favors, not the path of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor those who go astray after they have heard thy teachings. Say he, Allah, is one God. Allah is he of whom nothing is independent, but whom we all depend. He neither begets nor is he begotten, and there is none like him. And I bear witness that none or nothing deserves to be served or worshipped besides Allah. And I bear witness that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad is thy last and greatest messenger to we, the lost found Muslims here in the wilderness of North America. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the most merciful savior, we can never give enough thanks and praise to almighty God, Allah, who came in the person of Master Farad Muhammad for raising up in our midst his last and greatest messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. To Allah and his messenger do we submit as I greet my beloved brothers and sisters in the words of peace and paradise of assalamu alaikum. I would like to uh, Welcome everyone to another series of Muhammad's Sunday lectures brought to you by the Nation of Islam and Muhammad's Temples United. Muhammad's Temples United is a group of believers, a group of followers of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad who have come together in unity from different parts of the country for the purpose of spreading the truth as taught by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad for the purpose of resurrecting our people. When we say resurrecting our people, we're talking about mentally and spiritually resurrect. Back into the knowledge of self, God, and the devil. We, uh, Muhammad's Temples United, we're a uh, different, we're a group of brothers and sisters all over the country, and we've come together. And our intentions is to continue to spread this truth. We're also working to rebuild our nation. In one of my previous lectures, I mentioned that we're not trying to start a new organization or a new group. Uh, we're simply, I shouldn't say simply because it's not simple. We are putting together what was torn apart, which Allah and his messenger, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, had built a nation within a nation, an example for us to see how we could be as an independent nation within this nation, to do for self, to provide for self, 
to employ self, to teach self, to govern self. You know, these are things that black people have never really come to understand or realize about our own self-independence. We never thought about these things such as governing, governing self. We've always wanted to be a part of this government. We always wanted, uh, I hear a lot of black people say, a seat at the table. We're trying to rebuild the works of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And not that we expect for it to be as it was when he was amongst us physically, you know, but we understand that we are a nation of people, a nation of people, not to be understood as part of this nation, the United States of America. No, we are not Americans. We're trying to get our people to understand their nature. And our nature is opposite of this nation that we're living in here in America. So, God has come and he has raised one from amongst us. And in the person of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the one he raised, to teach us back into the knowledge of self, to know that we are not the same as the people who govern this nation. And we can never be brothers to this nation. We are opposites. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us that we should seek land of our own for the purpose of governing, governing ourselves, for the purpose of becoming independent of this nation because as the honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us as long as we are under this nation we will never be equal to them we will always be in servitude to this nation and it only makes sense it only makes sense why would the white man give you an equal place in his nation, in his government or society after he has built it for him and his people. I, I wouldn't want to do that in, if we had our own nation. I wouldn't want to have another nation to share an equal seat in a house that we've built. You're welcome. You will always be welcome as guests in our house if you are of the righteous, but to share equal ownership. No, this, this house belongs to us. So the white man has that same right. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad always taught us to seek land of our own so that we can build a nation of our own. That is the only way that we can be equal to our former slave masters. We must have a land of our own and we must govern self. So this is what the believers, the brothers and sisters who are um, under the title of Muhammad's Temples United, we're coming together to help do that, to help build our nation. 
Like I said, we're not an organization. We are members of the Nation of Islam. And we're seeking to do what Allah's messenger instructed us to do. What's first and foremost is our duty as civilized men and women is to teach civilization to the uncivilized. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad had given us lessons, lessons that teach us a higher and supreme way of life, a higher and supreme knowledge of the civilizations of the planet. A knowledge that was not made known to the world. So that knowledge was given to us first so that we can be the teachers to the rest of the world. So that we can be the leaders and the, the example to the rest of the world. We are ushering in a new world order, a new universal order as this world order is on its way out and a new world order is on its way in. And if you are awoke today, you can see this transition and happening in order for a new order to come in. The old order must die out. Do you see what's going on in the world today? Do you see this world that's been dominating for the past thousands of years starting to crumble, starting to fall? If if you're if you're if you're awoken and if you're paying attention, you can see that governments, heads of government and state are at odds with one another. Most of the people are dissatisfied with the world and the leaders of the world. We see this, you turn on the news, you see these leaders at odds with one another. You see different countries that at once upon a time, they used to be allies. Now they're at odds, odds with one another. There's a, a war going on. And a lot of us is asleep to that war. We expect a war to be something that where you see combat troops in a country and they're shooting and tanks and you know bombs are dropping but there's a a war of the minds that's going on today there's a war of the soul the spirit that's going on today and the scriptures teaches us about that war it's a war that will end all wars. It's the final war. And that war is called the War of Armageddon. The War of Armageddon is a war between good and evil. It's a war between the righteous and the unrighteous. It's a war between God and the devil. What side are you on, brothers and sisters? Are you on the side of God or are you on the side of the devil? Many of us unknowingly is on the side of the devil thinking 
that we're on the side of God. Because we have been deceived. The devil has made himself a God of this world. Think about it. The world that we've been witnessing, this world of evil and wickedness, death and destruction, slavery, suffering and death. Who would be the God of that world? Would the righteous God allow all of that to be happening in a world that he is ruling? I don't think so. That sounds like a world that the devil is ruling. But his time is up as taught to us by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And the scriptures bear witness to this, that the devil's time or rule is up. God permitted the devil to rule the land, the world, for a period of time. And after that period of time, he would come and he would destroy him and remove his world. Brick by brick, there will not be a stone unturned. That's, that's complete destruction. Complete. And he will bring in his new world and his people to bring in a new way of life, a life of righteousness. This is happening today. As you see on our board, we have a saying that says, a question that says, which one will survive the war of Armageddon? Will it be Christianity? The nation of Christianity, America, which represents slavery, suffering, death to the black man and woman and all people of color? Or will it be Islam under this great and holy universal flag which represents freedom, justice, and equality. Which side are you on? And you can't straddle the fence. You have to choose. Islam is the religion of peace. It has been, uh, it is our nature in which we were created. And this is something that has been unknown to us here in America. Since we were brought to the shores of America, we were robbed of the knowledge of self, God, and the devil, not knowing our true nature. Islam is the nature in which we were created. Islam is the nature in which God created himself. Because there was no one before God, the originator. So there was no one to create him. So he had to be self-created. And the nature in which he created himself was in the nature of Islam. Islam means peace. Everything within nature submits to the will of Allah, except the devil. The devil was created outside of the nature of God. He is the opposite. 
But God intended that. The devil is not self-created. He was made. He was made by God. So the first question that would come to me, as I would think it would come to you, is why would God make the devil? It's a good question. Why would God make the devil? That's a, a deep subject. But I will, I will kind of grace that answer for you. And we'll teach on it more so. You know, I, I had been teaching from the message to the black man in America, written by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I will continue that series of lectures as it relates to the message to the black man, and we will get into the making of the devil. But to kind of grace that answer, the devil had to be made. for the purpose of us understanding ourself. You know, in God's creation, God's creation evolves into perfection. It's not created perfect from the beginning, it evolves into perfection. Like with a child, when a child is born, a child isn't born perfect. It's perfect in its nature of being created, but it's not perfect in this uh, development. It hasn't been fully developed. So that child grows into perfection by learning uh, is physical components, learning how to crawl, learning how to walk, learning how to run. And it also grows in its mental capacity as a, a thinker. You know, the, the mind, they say the mind is like clay and it can be molded. The mind can be shaped and formed in the way of thinking, in the way of creativity. And that happens through stages of a process. In our spirituality, we grow. The more we learn, the more we become connected to God and our nature. So as we grow, we become more perfect in each stage of development. You know, my minister had taught me, he said that knowledge is like a pebble being thrown in a pond. And when you see that pebble hits the pond, you see ripples. The water ripples in circles, 360 degrees, starting small, expanding bigger. Each ripple or each circle represents a degree of knowledge. Each circle is 360 degrees. And that's a completion within that circle. But once you complete that stage, there's another stage of development that also consists of 360 degrees. Knowledge is infinite. Knowledge is infinite. It, you can continue to grow in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. As long as we've been on the planet, we have continued to grow in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So the devil was created because 
we had to understand what was within ourselves. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us that the devil was grafted from the original. Anything that is grafted from the original is devil. So within the original man was this imperfection or a weak germ in the black man. Like I say, we wasn't created perfect. We were created to evolve into perfection. So we had to take that weak germ out to examine it, to study it, to learn what it is within us that caused a defect in our nature. So one of our wise scientists while playing with two magnets learned the nature of opposites attract. And he was wise enough to see that 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 weak germ had to be brought out of us in order for us to master self. So the devil was created. I'm sorry, the devil was made from the original man through a process called grafting. It's a very deep subject. It's a very extensive subject. And we will be sure to teach on that subject about the making of the devil. But I kind of, since I brought it up, I kind of want to give you something to chew on or to think on because we need to be removed from that mystery way of thinking, this mystery God and this mystery devil. Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us about the reality of God, that God is real, that God is present. I want to kind of introduce uh, some of my brothers and sisters, all of you who are not familiar with Islam as taught by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. I want to introduce you to some of his literature. You know, before I do that, I want to kind of share something with you, brothers and sisters. You know, some of the believers and followers or the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Some feel as though the time of resurrection is up. They feel as though we shouldn't be wasting our time trying to teach this truth to our people with the hopes of them accepting the truth and reclaiming their own. Some feel as though we should be moving on. Like, for example, you know, during the time when Noah was building his ark, and he was gathering all that he was gathering and trying to get the people to come on the ark. And at a certain point of time, it was time to close the door, shut the door. 
And once that door was shut, it wasn't to be open to let anyone else in. Noah lost his son to the flood. Many people died in that flood. So I relate that to what some are saying about Islam as taught by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the resurrection of the, the dead, our people, the mental, the mentally and spiritually dead. They feel as though that time is up or has been up. And we shouldn't worry about you all anymore, that we should seek some type of refuge for ourselves. Let's just work on creating a refuge for ourselves. And to be honest with you, I can understand that way of thinking to a degree. Because in my experience, in the nation of Islam. I came to accept and reclaim my own back in 1994. And I, along with others, have been doing the work of trying to spread this truth to our people, making it simple and plain. Many people who we've encountered know that what we're teaching is the truth. But they, are, they, they say they're not ready. They're not ready to do what's all required in the acceptance of the truth, you see. See, unlike Christianity, you can claim to be a Christian for, 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 for the most part, because what I, from what I see, I know you have some devout Christians who may feel differently, but you have to agree with me when I say that there's a lot of people who are proclaimed Christians who only profess it in name. And not only that, there is no pressure or requirement for those who claim to be Christians to make any changes. They say, come as you are. They come as they are and they leave as they are. But with the acceptance of truth in Islam, as taught by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, it requires change. There's a saying that belief counts for nothing if not carried into practice. Belief counts for nothing if not carried into practice. If you are a believing man or woman, you must practice what you preach. This is what makes the truth beneficial to you. This truth has power. When we refer to the teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, we say the life giving teachings. Understand that life giving teachings, it gives life. Of course, we're not talking about raising the dead, the, the physically dead, bringing someone back to life after they died physically. We're talking about giving life, raising you from a mentally and spiritually dead state. This is and was our condition before the coming of Allah in the person of Master Farah Muhammad and his raising of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. We were mentally and spiritually dead. 
mentally dead because we did not know who we were. We were who the white man said we were. Niggas, Negroes, African-American, Afro-American, everything but who we truly are. God came to teach us who we were. And that's one of the questions in our lessons. The first question, who is the original man? That's the first thing he wants us to know is who we are. Who is the original man? And the answer was the original man is the Asiatic black man. The maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, God of the universe. That's who we are. And that means a lot. And you can dig into that to get a deeper understanding. The original man, who is the original man? These are the people who came with the planet. These are the people of God. The black man and woman in America are the original people of the planet Earth. The makers, the owners, the cream of the planet Earth, God of the universe, God of the universe. He came to teach us who we were. For we were lost. A spiritual resurrection. The life given teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad to raise us spiritually and to the knowledge of God, the knowledge of self, the knowledge of the devil, to remove from us this slave making religion called Christianity. Christianity was used to enslave us. Think about it. Think about your Christian teachers, the slave master. He taught you Christianity. He taught it to you because he wanted you to be good slaves. With things like love your enemy. It is against your nature to love your enemy. to turn the other cheek. You don't turn the other cheek to your enemy because he'll strike you on the other cheek. Christianity, it took us from the reality in which we live into some fantasy world that believing that God is somewhere up there and the devil is somewhere down there and that they can possess you. The devil can possess you or uh, God can possess you, the spirit of God can possess you. It's time to unlock the chains from our minds and accept Islam. The time is now. For those of you who've been, who've been thinking that we have all this time, we, we're out of time. We're behind time because we have to start preparing ourselves for the exodus.
And it takes a lot in preparation. Just imagine if you're getting ready to, you know, take a flight to another country. It takes a lot of preparation, packing, planning, and all this, that. But when I'm talking about preparing, oh, for the great and dreadful day of the Lord, it's going to take some real preparations. It doesn't take a few days or a few weeks. It's going to take some real preparations. I'm talking about preparing yourself physically and mentally, spiritually for the for the for the coming for the exodus for the separation which ones will survive the war Armageddon what do you, can you imagine what that would be like when that war is over you're not going to be able to return back to your previous way of life so you need to start preparing now for a new way of life, a life of righteousness. So all the things that you were permitted to do in this way of life, all the drug usage, all the alcohol usage, all the open homosexuality, all this evil and wickedness in the world. You know, it's hard for some of you to stop smoking. You have a step program to stop smoking. Imagine if you had to stop smoking overnight. Imagine if you had to stop using alcohol overnight and these drugs. You're going to have some type of reaction that's gonna affect you in a negative way. Most of these things are chemical dependencies. So even if you have a strong mind to stop, your body has a reaction to it. Your lungs and your liver has a reaction to it. It starts to become dependent upon these things. And when you're taking off, it has negative effects. That's how come in some drug treatments, they take you off of one drug and put you on a lesser drug. Because your body wouldn't be able to take it if they took you off cold turkey. You, 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 things will start collapsing on you. So they have to do these things in degrees. So a law has come. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad wrote a book. It's called Our Savior Has Arrived. Our Savior Has Arrived, not is coming, not is to arrive, but has arrived. He has already come. He came, as the scripture says, like a thief in the night, undetected. We didn't know he had come until after he had did what he came to do and left. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad made us aware of who he was that came. He raised us up. He came. He raised the most honorable Elijah Muhammad to teach the rest of us what God had taught him. Powerful book, I highly recommend you get it, along with the message to the black man. And once he had taught us about the coming of God, he also started teaching us about the fall of America. By the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. To let us know that America would indeed fall for its crime committed to the black man and woman, the people of God. That is why America will fall. She has never repented for her sins. 
She has never tried to make right of her sin against the people of God. So she will indeed fall. Which one will survive the war Armageddon? Christianity in America or Islam and the black man and woman? And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, he wants to prepare us for this new world that's, that's coming in. So he teaches us not only about knowledge of self, God, and the devil, not only of the fall of America, not only about the coming of God, but he also teaches us how to eat to live. Why? Why is that important? Because we have been taught how to eat to die by the rulers of this world. From the time of slavery, eating the worst foods possible. Today we call it soul food, where we're eating the pig. We're eating collard greens and lama beans black-eyed peas, ham hocks. Oh, black people get excited when we hear about it. Oh, that's some good, good eating. You know, our, our people, our women, had to make do with that food that was given to us. So they learned how to season it to where we can swallow it down. But think about it. This is the, the worst foods that you can eat. Slave food. While they eat the best of foods. This is something that we know now. Because we see what that type of eating does for us. We see that it causes high blood pressure, high cholesterol, contributes to diabetes, heart disease, all these things. So he taught us how to eat to live so that we don't have to deal with those health issues. You know, eat to live. From God in person, Master Farah Muhammad, by Elijah Muhammad, Messenger of Allah. This is God teaching you how to eat. He created you so he knows what's best for you. You know, there's a lot of foods that we eat today that doesn't, that wasn't made for us. Yes, it's consumable. You can eat it, but it, it's not good for you. It may have some of the nutrients that our body needs, but for our body to process those types of food is irregular. It destroys our digestive process. You see, some of those foods were made for animal consumption, like corn. That shell around the corn is your body can't digest it. That's how come you'll see when a little baby or sometimes with adults, we eat corn on the cob or that whole corn and it'll come out whole in your stool because your stomach can't digest that, that shell around that corn. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, if you're going to eat corn, eat that milky corn, that creamy type of corn because it's, it's the way it's been processed, it's been made easier for your stomach to digest. But you eat that whole kernel corn, your body is going to have trouble digesting it. And it's, it's going to start tearing down your digestive walls. And this is where a lot of our uh, defenses against the poisons in food, because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that all foods have poison in it. There's 
nothing that's really pure. So that's why our body goes through the process of separating the nutrients and all that's good for the body and the, the part that is not. And it comes out as waste. But our bodies go through a process of even the best foods for us to separate those poisons from what is good. And a lot of you nutritionists, you know, you, you teach us about uh, calories, proteins, and all these things, which is good. But most of you don't live long. Most of you run into these health issues. Why? Because you haven't been taught the proper foods to eat and the proper time to eat. See, even though you understand how much nutrients to give the body, you don't understand how the body works to process the food and how much time should be in between each meal. You know, history has taught us that people have lived to be hundreds of years old. We don't find people living past 100, not often, very rarely. Because even the foods that's supposed to be good for us is not as good as it used to be because these farmers are feeding it with all these types of, you know, additives and preservatives and, you know, all these things that make the food grow faster and and that we're also consuming that and that's affecting us as well. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that we should at least put 24 to 36 hours in between each meal. That gives our body time to process that food and distribute it throughout our body before you put that on your digestive system again you know if you're eating breakfast lunch dinner snacks all in between your digestive system and your stomach is constantly working and it's a very delicate system in that internal digestive wall and it can be worn down over a period of time so to reduce that you put time in between eating so that your stomach is, your digestive system is not constantly working. It's take, it, it, needs to, it needs to have a break in between those meals. And eat only when your body calls for it. This will make you healthier and this will help you to live longer. Eat to live. So I highly recommend you get these books by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. This is the beginning of coming into the knowledge of self. And it's time for you, black man and woman, who know that what we are teaching, the followers of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, to be the truth, it's time to join on. Because remember earlier I talked about Noah's Ark, and when that door shut, it never opened back up. Well, there's going to be a time that the doors are going to shut. And that's when it's going to be too late. We're still doing the work until we are called. We're continue, continuing to teach Islam. And you still have an opportunity to accept the truth and reclaim your own. We ask that you continue to join us for these Muhammad Sunday lectures. 
And we ask that you don't just come to listen and just to bear witness. We're not looking for a, a, a round of applause. We're not looking for fame or recognition. We are here as servants. We are here to bear witness of the coming of God and the raising of his messenger. We only want you, black man and woman, to recognize this truth and accept the truth and unite with your brothers and sisters. Unite so that we can be begin, not begin because we've already begun, so we can continue to build this great and mighty nation of ours, a nation that the world has never witnessed, that will be headed by Almighty God Allah himself. Regardless of what's going on in your life, you got to make one step forward. Reach out to us because we have what it is that you need to start this journey to self-knowledge, to unity. If not for you, do it for the future of our people, for our children, because you see where they are. The devil got a stronghold on them. He has a stronghold on him and he's not going to let him go. The devil want to take a lot of us with him. He knows his time is up. So if you know your time is up, the devil going to take as many of us with him as he can. So we have to get after our people get out to our children, protect our women, and build a future for them. And that future cannot be a replica of this nation that we're witnessing in today, or this world that we're witnessing today. It has to be a world of righteousness. So I'm not gonna hold you much longer, brothers and sisters. You know, every time that we stand before you, our subject is always about the time and what must be done. That's always our subject. Although we may have underlying subjects that we speak of, but they always relate to the time and what must be done. We want to awaken you to the time that we're living in. And we want to tell you what must be done, how to prepare, how to survive. Because unfortunately, many of us will fall victim holding on to the devil, holding on to this way of civilization. You love it. You love it. And you don't think there's anything better for you and I. You see us as just a bunch of preachers, teachers, just this pro-black group or organization that's teaching about black stuff. <laughs> oh. You, 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 you don't you don't understand. You don't understand. But I pray that you do. I pray that you gain some understanding. So reach out to us. The number at the bottom of the screen. You can give us a call. We are setting up a process 
in which we can orientate you into your own. The nation of Islam belongs to you. Let me tell you how we how we see you, and then I'm gonna close out. Black man and woman, you are the nation of Islam. Whether you accept it or not, God has said that, God has proclaimed that you are the nation of Islam. The black man and woman here in America. Your nature is that of a Muslim. One who submits to the will of God. That is your very nature. But you have been acting out of your nature, following the enemy of God. You have not known God since you've been here. God is being introduced to you today. And we attempt to make this truth simple and plain that even a child could understand. I know many of you have questions. I know many of you have doubts and disbelief because you've been hooked on Christianity for so long that it's hard to let go. You've been following this way of life for so long that is hard to let go. You need to surround yourself with those who are trying to be upright. You need to be in communion. You need to be in In, in contact with those of like minds. You can't do it on your own. That's why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, unity is the key to our success. Unity is the key to our success. Understand that. So until next time, brothers and sisters, we will continue to teach the truth. We will continue to give this life-giving teachings to our people in hopes that they will accept the truth and reclaim their own. I thank you for your time and attention. We ask that you give us a call. We ask that you reach out to us if you have any questions, if you would like to learn more, if you would like to reclaim your own, if you agree with what you've heard today to be the truth and you accept it as the truth and you're ready to Reclaim your own and unite with us. Reach out to us. I thank you again. And I greet you. As I met you in the words of peace and paradise. Of assalamu alaikum. So brothers and sisters, if we, if you will allow us to close out in prayer. Position of prayer. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. The Beneficent, the Most Merciful, Master this day of judgment in which we now live. Thee alone do we serve and thee alone do we beseech for aid. Guide us on the right path. The path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed thy favors, not the path of those upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor those who go astray after they've heard our teachings. Amen. Assalamu alaikum.